Hey class, welcome back to Geology 12. I'm going to continue on with my oceanography lectures. And this next section is on atmospheric circulation. We need to know a little bit about this because the winds blowing across the ocean surface, not only do they generate waves, but also they're going to cause ocean currents as well. And uh, especially the surface currents. So there's going to be basically two types of currents. There's the, um, so these surface currents, key thing about these, they amount to about maybe 10% of ocean circulation. And then there's another series called the thermohaline currents, and these are about 90%. So most of the ocean turning or ocean mixing, really it's, it's a mixing that we're, that we're thinking, is this thermohaline. And it has to do with temperature, and haline refers to salinity, right? So in fact, in fact we talked about the pycnocline, right? Uh, which is density changes, but also there's the halocline, which is salinity differences, and the thermocline, right? So thermohaline means um, the, the, these density currents driven by cold water sinking or salty water sinking as well. And then the next thing I talk about is air. You'll see that about 21% of our atmosphere is oxygen. 78% uh, is nitrogen gas. So most of our gas is nitrogen. And then 1% is going to be other. Right, like like um, argon gas and a little bit of carbon dioxide. But we want to know what happens to air, for example, dry air versus moist air, right? So if we have these compositions, so dry air obviously has no moisture, but if you had, let's say you had a, a volume, a cubic volume, maybe like a, a cubic centimeter of air in there with these molecules in there, and they're packed with oxygen and nitrogen, which are the most abundant ones, so we've got these molecules in here. But then let's say I wanted to put an H2O water, water vapor, right? Remember the little arrow means it's a vapor um, or gas there, right? Let's say I wanted to add some of that into the mix here. So if I wanted to add the water, I'd, I'd have to take out like an oxygen or a nitrogen. For moist air, I'm taking the oxygen out. Uh, we, we look at these atomic weights. The atomic weight of oxygen, so the oxygen, each oxygen is weighs 16 uh, atomic masses. And so there's two of them. So we have 32 atomic mass. I'll put AM for atomic mass. Whereas water, you know, remember each oxygen is 16, but hydrogen is only one. Since we have two, we're going to have two there. So one, one water molecule has 18 atomic masses. In other words, I'm replacing, taking the, the, a heavier molecule out and replacing it with a lighter molecule. So the key thing I want you to know is that moist air is less dense than dry air. And that's kind of, um, you know, if we think about the hydrologic cycle, we've talked about the hydrologic cycle where the eva evaporation from the ocean, when you see evaporation from the ocean, that's why the air rises, because it's less, even though it's moist, but it's less dense than dry air. So that's an important concept to understand. Um, and obviously, you know, it makes sense, cold air will sink, warm air will rise, right? The other big part of Earth is Earth receives uneven solar radiation because of the sun's rays are coming in at a, at a higher angle at the equator. So if we had uh, the sun over here, right, and the sun's rays are coming in here, and we put the Earth over here. So near the equator, right, we put zero degree latitude there, the sun's rays are coming in at a very high angle. In fact, they call it a, a, a high angle of incidence. But then um, uh, uh, the rays coming in at higher latitudes are coming in at a much lower angle. If you can see this angle here. And so what that tends to happen is that there's going to be a, a more reflection at the higher latitudes, more reflection here, right? But there's going to be absorption here. I'll put absorb. So you can, because at the, at the, near the equator, there's going to be more solar radiation that's absorbed and then more reflected off or bounced off at the higher latitudes. So that's why Earth is, is, gets, this, you know, it gets a net heat gain in the middle latitudes and there's a net heat loss higher up in the poles. And I think I have a little, yeah. So it kind of, this is what the cartoon I was sort of drawing uh, on my cartoon over here. So at the equator, uh, the sun is about 90 degrees overhead, directly overhead. Near the poles, it's basically on the horizon, at 5 degrees uh, above the horizon. And which means at the equator, 2% is bounces off, but 90, 98% is absorbed. So high percentage of absorption. Whereas at the poles, you'll see that 60% absorbed, 40% bounces off, right? So, 
So in essence, there's gonna be a net heat loss at these higher latitudes. When we start thinking about how Earth moves and how Earth rotates, we're gonna get this um, non-spinning Earth model first because um, obviously Earth is gonna spin, it's gonna kind of cause things to change. But let's look at the, the non-spinning Earth model first. All right, here I have a model of the Earth and I, I'm gonna I have latitude zero degrees the equator, 30, 60 going north, 30, 60 going south in the South Pole and the North Pole. And so what's gonna happen because Earth gets most of the solar radiation uh, near the, the tropics, the lower latitudes, we tend to see warmer air. And so warm air will tend to rise. So we'll draw a little arrow showing that air is rising here. Then uh, when it gets in the higher in the atmosphere, it's gonna start moving both toward the north and toward the south, right? And at, at about those latitudes, it begins to cool um, and start moving down, right? So it begins to cool, remember cold air will sink. So what happens, uh, and then at 30 degrees latitude, some of that air will make it back toward the equator, right? So we show arrows going this way, and then some of the air will make it up towards a 60 degree latitude over this way as well, right? So we'll draw arrows that way. So the first thing I want you to notice here is because as air rises, it's gonna create a, a, a low pressure, low P, I'm gonna put low P. And whenever we have a low pressure system that moves into like the like our area, we usually get get rain, right? They usually get get some rain there, right? Uh, so it's an area that may see higher precipitation, right? When air descends, right, it usually uh, compresses and warms. In fact, that's the other thing I, I didn't mention earlier. So uh, rising air, it it expands and cools. That's an important concept whereas descending air uh, compresses and warms. Here we see descending air, so we're gonna see high pressure, high P, both at these latitudes here, high P, which means, um, and warm, so it's gonna be dry. It's gonna be dry here, right? So usually that's, that, that's our, so usually the deserts seem to be at this latitude. So we'll put desert latitude, desert latitude. So we tend to see deserts there. And then, so this, so we get these atmospheric circulation cells. And so these first cells are, are called the, the Hadley cells. So there's two cells, one in the northern hemisphere, one in the southern hemisphere. All right, so let's follow, see what's going on with this air that's moving up toward these higher latitudes. So up here, the air is gonna warm enough, warm up and start rising again. And then some of that air will make it back toward 30 degree latitude. And then some of that air will make it back up toward the North Pole, right? And so this rising air again, so in fact, let's do it down here. So we see rising air here and some of this air going back this way, making a circulation cell there. And then some of this air will go back toward the South Pole over here. But this rising air is going to create another region of low pressure, low P. And it's also low P. So usually we get, we get, I'll put PPT for precipitation. Here it might be rain or snow because it's cold or higher latitudes, right? Um, usually at these latitudes, you'll see lots of conifer forests, you know, pine trees and stuff like up in, in Canada, for example. Um, Washington State, you know, up in the Pacific Northwest, you see these lots of trees, right? And the tropics, lots of tropical rainforests, right? So lots of precipitation, lots of water, right? Uh, but the key thing is low pressure. The other thing I want to add here is because we're seeing... Um, at these dry latitudes here, uh, we should say that there's some evaporation here. I'll put evap and then also evap. So in other words, we tend to see evaporation um, uh, and higher ocean salinities because as you evaporate more water, typically the, these latitudes have a little bit higher ocean salinity because of that evaporation. Then we'll, once we get, oh, so um, the names of these cells are called the feral cells. Feral cell here. Here's another one, feral cell. So there's another set of atmosphere cells, in this case between 30 and 60 degrees latitude. Then finally for the polar cells, uh, so as this air comes down, it's gonna descend at the poles, right? And then that air will make it back down to the 60 degree latitude. So this would be our polar cell. And we call this point here the, the polar high. Polar high, because there's, there's high pressure, right? High air coming down, high pressure. So really the, the poles are, are deserts, but it's just frozen, right? There's really no 
very little precipitation, but it's just cold and frozen, right? Now, well, let's, this is complete the polar cell up here in the northern hemisphere, right? So uh, polar high up here, and here's our polar cell. It will show the air kind of moving back towards 60 degree latitude there. So, so we got these atmospheric cells, right? These atmospheric cells are, are going to also form these surface winds, right? So remember I said that we have a non-spinning Earth model right now, non-spinning. Eventually, uh, as Earth spins, the wind patterns and the ocean currents are going to be deflected. So uh, the next step is uh, let's look at what happens to the surface wind. So note that the winds are, are moving away from the high pressure and moving toward the low pressure. So high pressure moving toward the low, to the low pressure. So we have these, these wind belts. And remember, we're going to draw them straight as dashed arrows here because um, we're drawing the non-circulating, non-spinning earth, right? And these are going in this direction here. Right, from low pressure to high pressure. And then same thing with the southern hemisphere, from low pressure, sorry, from high pressure to low pressure. High pressure, always from high pressure to low pressure. And the fact that the polar highs are high pressure, the wind is moving in this way as well. We'll just do a couple up here and also at the down here. So basically, I'm, I'm just drawing uh, the arrows showing on the side here, because you know, you're going from high pressure to low pressure. So I'm just drawing these arrows on her surface now. So these would be the surface winds, right? 